So <clears throat> the issue with eschatology and prophecy for for the ideological possessed people that think they know certain views are wrong because they need them to be wrong because of choices they made in their past that they want to justify without any regard for the truth. They just know certain views are wrong because they have to be. Then they start to look at it and start to forget how much they don't actually know which is the state a lot we're all in, myself included, by the way. But I do know enough to know that they don't know much. Mainly <clears throat> Solo Scriptura, uh, who I actually, I like the guy. I just think his name is essentially, a, it's basically stolen valor for him to have that name, screen name, after giving up the biblical truths that he has slowly to justify his... Uh, you know, false uh, no, um, assumptions about what he thinks he knows. As he slowly let go of truths that have no basis in Scripture regarding hell, regarding the Sabbath, regarding anything that resembles Seventh day Adventists. So, I, I, I think he uh, has bad motivations, but I don't think he's aware of it. Chris Lucas, same exact story. Uh, just can't imagine that Adventists actually know what they're talking about, and then when they're confronted with it, uh, rather than humbling themselves, they um, lash out, say things that aren't true repeatedly, as if they know what is right or not. As when I've watched them learn with me certain things about the text that they weren't aware of, they have no business saying what they're saying. <clears throat> you did not come to know it was false and then leave. You left and then now you've looked for reasons to prove it's false. Okay, that being said, I want to look at some ideas that were... I want to know if these people reject. Do you reject the idea that uh, what the Reformers pointed out, that Rome, the Church of Rome, had been corrupt and... This, that the uh, Pope had the spirit of the Antichrist. Here's the issue. Daniel 7 gives us the succession of kingdoms, and we know Rome is the final one from Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. We know that Rome was in power when Jesus came the first time. So, there's a couple options. The one says he's the lawless one, he'll speak blasphemies against the Most High, he'll seek to change times and laws. Is that Antiochus? Epiphanies in Daniel 7? Because now you've attached what... But Paul's using that person in 2 Thessalonians 2. He's talking about that person and his spirit being in the church. Well, that person is comes out of the Roman kingdom in Daniel 7. So, if you're not a futurist, okay, which you aren't, I'm sure you will, you may jump to that if you have to, just to prove Seventh-day Adventists wrong, of course. I'm sure you'll go as far as you need to. The problem is, that individual, are you abandoning the Protestant uh, consensus? Which wouldn't make any sense, because it tells you he comes out of Rome. Whom Jesus will destroy with the brightness of his coming and the breath of his mouth. That day will not come until the lawless one be revealed, the son of perdition. How are you going to make Daniel... How, Jesus destroys the man from Daniel 7, according to 2 Thessalonians 2, with the brightness of his coming and the breath of his mouth. The guy in Daniel 7 uh, that Jesus destroys, what do you think this uh, Daniel 11 is talking about? The resurrection happens at Jesus' coming. Daniel 11 into Daniel 12 talks about the little horn from Daniel 8, which comes after Daniel 7. The guy in Daniel 7 is called the little horn. The guy in Daniel 8 is the little horn. Daniel 11 seems to be talking about the same individual from Daniel 8. And then the resurrection happens. Well, what happens at the resurrection? According to 2 Thessalonians 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, 
or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter it's from us that that day of Christ is at hand let no man deceive you by any means that day will not come except there's a falling away first the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition the man of lawlessness who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or what is worshipped so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God But the mystery of iniquity, that is lawlessness, is already at work. The mystery, the spirit. You know, that's obviously related to some of the Gnostics who rejected the law of God and said they were good because of grace. The early church fathers spoke against them for those, those reasons. We know what kinds of beliefs they had. That's the spirit of the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of lawlessness. The man of iniquity who seeks to change times and laws. You know what that means? He seeks to change God's laws regarding time. That spirit whom the, and man whom the Lord Jesus will destroy at the brightness of his coming in the breath of his mouth, that man's spirit is already at work in the church. What is his spirit? Lawlessness. Who is he? The individual that arises out of the little horn, Daniel 7, which is Rome. But yet Jesus will destroy him with the brightness of his coming in the breath of his mouth. So, whoever that is, it's who he destroys at the resurrection. Daniel 11 into Daniel 12. Therefore, Daniel 11 is the same one, which is the same one from Daniel 7, which means it's the same person or figure or power as in Daniel 8. End of story. Stop telling lies. Stop acting like you know. You don't know. You don't know what you're talking about. And you're, you don't realize the damage you're doing because of your own personal whatever. God bless. All the best to you.